Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. I will continue uh, talking about quadrangles, and uh, today's topic will be rhombus. Rhombus is basically a kind of a parallelogram, parallelogram, parallelogram <laughs> um, which I have actually talked about in the previous lecture. Now, what kind of parallelogram is it? Well, the one which has all sides congruent to each other. So basically, it's like basically taking a parallelogram, but not just any parallelogram. You know that, generally speaking, the opposite sides are congruent to each other. That's the general par par parallelogram. But the one which we are talking about is uh, the one which has all sides equal. So these sides, all four sides, are equal to each other, congruent to each other, equal in size, basically. OK, so that's the definition of the rhombus. Now, since the rhombus is parallelogram, and it also has some specific quality that all sides are congruent to each other, all the properties of the parallelogram are supposed to be true for uh, the rhombus as well. Now, I will just mention all these properties because they were discussed and proven in the previous lecture. So I'll just mention them here. That's why I have this piece of paper. Okay, two angles of parallelogram formed by um, uh, any one side with both neighboring sides are supplemental. So these two angles are supplemental to each other. Now, again, this is a property of the parallelogram in general, which means any rhombus also has this property. And I'm not going to, 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 to prove it because it's proven for parallelograms. Two angles uh, form, the, okay, parallel sides are congruent. Okay, now, from the definition of the parallelogram, and the definition was that opposite sides are parallel to each other, we have proven that opposite sides are also congruent to each other. Well, this is a property of the parallelogram. Now, in rhombus, we bring it further by actually defining a rhombus as not only these four, but the two, but, also, uh, but, but these two as well. And all four of them are exactly the same lengths. That's the definition of the rhombus. But still, the property of the parallelogram is that the opposite sides are congruent to each other. This to this, and this to this. Uh, next, if two pairs of opposite sides are congruent, then this is parallelogram. OK, so um, we have proven that if this side is congruent to this, and separately this to this, then it's a parallelogram. Well, in rhombus, we have actually defined the rhombus as four sides being congruent. So that's why rhombus is obviously a parallelogram. Um, opposites an uh, opposite angles are congruent. So this angle is congruent to this. It's true for a rhombus as well, because rhombus is a parallelogram. If two opposite sides are parallel and congruent to each other, then we don't really care what kind of relationship between other sides. It's already parallelogram. Okay, in rhombus we have a different quality, but nevertheless, whatever we have stated for parallelogram is definitely true for rhombus. Uh, distance between parallel lines measuring measured along any mutual perpendicular. Okay, this is a property which was stating that if you have two parallel lines, then no matter where you measure the distance, it will be the same. I proved this for parallelograms, actually, because I was using parallelograms. But nevertheless, I just mentioned it here because it was in the previous lecture. A point of intersection of diagonals in the parallelogram divides each diagonal into two congruent parts. OK, so if you have two diagonals, one and two, this point divides each diagonal into two parts congruent uh, among themselves. And this is true, obviously, for a rhombus as well, because rhombus is a parallelogram. Um, if a point of intersection of two diagonals in a quadrangle divides each diagonal into two congruent parts, then it's a parallelogram. Well, it's actually a converse theorem, 
which states that if you have two diagonals divided by intersection point in each, each diagonal divided into two congruent parts, then it will be parallelogram. Again, it's a property of the parallelogram. It's not really much related to the rhombus because uh, we, will, we will actually prove something else, which is much more, diff much more interesting about perpendicularity of these. Uh, okay, and uh, the last but not least, sequentially connected midpoints of any of any quadrangle sequentially connected midpoints form a parallelogram. All right, this is just a property of parallelograms and doesn't really matter. Uh, for rhombus right now, I just mentioned it as a repetition because rhombus is uh, a kind of parallelogram. But now, since we have some additional um, property uh, with, with rhombus, which is different from general parallelograms, namely all four sides are congruent to each other, we have certain additional properties of the rhombus which are not applicable to general para parallelograms. And here they are. I have a couple of theorems here. First of all, diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular to each other. Okay, this is very important, and this is very... It's a particular property of the rhombus, that these diagonals are perpendicular to each other. Now, how can we prove it? Well, actually, it's quite obvious. Since it's rhombus, Let's put some letters around it. Uh, since it's rhombus, sides AB and BC are equal to each other, which means ABC is equilateral triangle. Now, from the properties of the parallelogram, which I was just repeating, we know that this is midpoint of diagonal AC, which means Let's put this point M, which means BM is a median of ABC triangle. Now, the median in an, in an isosceles triangle, uh, did I say equilateral? No, it's isosceles triangle. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, in the isosceles triangle, uh, median BM is also uh, an altitude and angle bisector. Remember that property of the isosceles triangles. Now, in this case, we are interested in the fact that this is um, uh, altitude. So this is right angle. And that's exactly what's necessary to prove, that diagonals are perpendicular to each other. OK, that's the first theorem. Second is that diagonals are angle bisectors, that these angles are equal to each other. And these angles are equal to each other, and these and these. Again, it's very easy. Um, it's it, it's very easy to, uh, to to derive it from the fact that ABC is isosceles triangle, because again, median is angle bisector as well. So basically, that's the proof. It's exactly the same as the perpendicularity of the of the uh, of the diagonals. Uh, we just use a different property of the median uh, in the in isosceles triangle. One property was it's an altitude. Another property is it's an angle bisector. So both are needed. So diagonals are perpendicular to each other and are angle bisectors. OK, next, each diagonal of a rhombus is an axis of its symmetry. Now, do you remember what axis of symmetry actually is? So if you have a line and you have two points on opposite sides in such a way that this is a perpendicular and these two segments are congruent to each other, then these, these points are called symmetrical relative to this axis or reflection one of another. It's like a mirror reflection, basically. Now, what this theorem actually states that any diagonal is such an axis of symmetry. So if you take this 
piece on the right of the BD and turn it over, uh, it will coincide with this piece of, a, of, a, of, a, of a rhombus. Now, how can we prove it? Well, basically, we have already proven it because we have proven that diagonals are perpendicular to each other, which means since this is right angle, and also this piece of diagonal is congruent to this piece, because as we know from the parallelogram uh, property that diagonals are intersecting in the midpoint, so the point C is uh, uh, symmetrical to point A, because they are on a perpendicular line to the axis BG and on equal distances. Now, if A and C are symmetrical, now B and D points, they are lying on the axis itself, which means transformation of reflection actually transfers them into themselves. They are symmetrical to themselves. So if you have an uh, axis of symmetry, this uh, point is symmetrical to this, but this point is symmetrical to itself. Okay, which means that the whole rhombus, so since A and C are symmetrical, B and D are on the axis of symmetry, that means that the whole segment AB would be, would be symmetrical to BC, and uh, segment AD would be symmetrical to CD, which means that the rhombus is symmetrical relative to this diagonal. And obviously, this diagonal has exactly the same properties. There is no difference. OK, uh, next theorem. Point of intersection of rhombus diagonals is equidistant from all its four sides. All right, now, what does it mean? It means that the distance from here to this side and to this side and to this side and to this side is exactly the same. Now, how can we prove it? Well, if you remember, um, any um, diagonal of a rhombus is also an angle bisector. Now, from, from the properties of angle bisector, which we did discuss before, any point on the bisector is equidistant from both sides, which I can prove actually very easily um, because these two uh, angles are congruent and this is a common hypotenuse, so these uh, right triangles are congruent by hypotenuse and the acute angle um, and that's why these legs are congruent as well. So. Uh, that was done before, I mean, the proof of this was done before, so I can just use it. Again, this diagonal has a property that every point on it is equidistant from these two sides of an angle ABC. It's a bisecting. Now, but it's also bisecting the angle ADC, which means, again, every point on this diagonal is equidistant from these two. Uh, sides. And considering that the same, that, that this diagonal is equidistant from these two sides, and this piece is equidistant from this. So the point which is an intersection has all the properties of all, uh, of both diagonals, which means from this, the distance is the same from here to here, because it lies on this diagonal. But it also from here to here, because it lies on this diagonal, and from here to here because it lies on this, and from here to here because it lies on this. So since this is an intersection point, it's equidistant from all four sides of the rhombus. Because, again, if the point belongs to one set of points which has certain properties, and at the same time it belongs to another set of points, which has certain properties, then if it belongs to an intersection of these two sets, it has both properties. Okay. 
Uh, next, sequentially connected midpoints of a rhombus form a rectangle. Okay, so if you have midpoints here, 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 and here, and you connect them, you will get rectangle. Now, rectangle is actually subject of the next lecture. By definition, rectangle is a parallelogram, also a parallelogram, which has additional property that uh, all its angles are uh, congruent to each other. And obviously, in, it, it can be very easily proven that they are supposed to be 90 degrees, right angles. So in any case, uh, how can we prove that? Um, let me think. Oh, it's very easy. You see, this line, uh, let's call it M, N, P, and Q. So, the segment NP in the triangle BCG is a mid-segment, the one which connects two midpoints of two sides. And it's parallel to the base, BG in this case, and by the way, it's equal to half of the base, if you remember that theorem, which we did actually go through before. So, NP is parallel to BD, and in length, it's equal to its half. But same thing if you consider triangle ABG. MQ will be also a mid-segment, which means it's parallel to the same BG, and equal in length to the same half of BG, which means these two are parallel to each other, since they are parallel to the same BG, and they are congruent because their length is equal to half of this on both sides, which means M and PQ is parallelogram. Okay, that's easy. Um, also, since it's a parallelogram, and we know that this is, per is parallel to this, and this also is, is parallel to this, but we can do exactly the same logic and uh, derive that MN is parallel to diagonal AC, and uh, PQ is also parallel to, e, uh, to, to AC. So, MN and PQ are also parallel to themselves, but now let's think about what's the angle between MN and MP. Now, you remember, again, remember in, the pri in one of the prior lectures, that if you have two angles with mutually perpendicular sides, then these angles are supposed to be either supplemental or uh, congruent to each other. So if you have one angle and then another angle, so this is right angle and this is right angle, then this is equal to this. So here we have exactly the same situation. MN is parallel to AC. And, and P is parallel to BD. So we have two angles, M and P, and uh, B and C, uh, with, with mutually parallel sides. Oh, actually, it's, it's not perpendicular. I have another theorem here. If two angles have parallel sides, then they are also equal or perpendicular or, or supplemental to each other. Okay, so it's not the perpendicularity of the sides, it's parallelism between the sides. Since MN is parallel to AC and NP is parallel to BP, then this angle between them is equal or supplemental to this. But we have already proven that the angle between, hypot uh, between um, diagonals of the rhombus uh, is the right angle, 90 degrees which means this is also 90 degrees. And since it's a parallelogram, then the second, uh, the next uh, angle, which is supposed to be supplemental, is also 90 degree, and this is 90 degree, and this is 90 degree, so all of them are 90 degree, all of them are right angles, and that's why this is a rectangle. And that actually concludes all the specific um, properties of the rhombus, which I wanted to go through. Um, 
Don't forget that the uh, unizor.com website contains lots of different educational materials, and it's very useful for uh, parents who want to supervise the educational process of their children by enrolling them into this or that specific topic uh, in the course and, uh, and checking the exams, uh, checking the scores, and making a, making a decision about whether to pass or to fail uh, the student for this particular topic, and uh, if, if, if he or she fails, all it takes just to go through it again and again and repeat the exam until you will be perfect. And, uh, and parents and supervisors will be satisfied with your score. Uh, okay, good luck and uh, thanks, thanks very much. Uh, next lecture I will talk about rectangles in more details. Thank you.